Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. Um, all, all five of my, or not even that, I don't think, all five, three of my subscribers. Uh, welcome to my um, latest uh, YouTube video. Um, what I'm going to speak about today is um, the, the environment and, and how we need to sort that out. But actually, one last thing, I didn't uh, do a, a, a video last week those keen-eyed amongst you might have noticed. Um, one, I was incredibly unwell. I had a bit of a, I had a man flu. It's not incredibly unwell, I just have man flu. But also I was down in Cardiff uh, training um, because as a curate we had to do some compulsory training. So I was trying to get some of that done. Um, this one will be the last one. I won't be doing one next week. Um, I've got a very busy week I'm coming up and I'll tell you about that in a second. But this will be the last one from my shed, um, which in the beginning of December is really cold. I've got a radiator here. Um, I've had a, an air blower on as well. Um, the reason I'm in my shed is that uh, as, a, as, a, as a vicar, as a deacon in a church in Wales, I'm given uh, a house to live in. Um, when I was ordained in July, the house needed some work and wasn't ready. And hence the reason I've been, I've been working from my own house, uh, which will be leaving next week and moving into the vicarage. So we've been up and down towards the vicarage. Uh, I've set Wi-Fi up there because that's really important when you've got a teenage daughter. Um, so we've got all that sorted and various bits and pieces are going in this week. And then the big move happens next week uh, where I'll get my proper office uh, and not working from a garden shed. So it'd be, it'd be nice to be doing one of these messages quite warm. So, <clears throat> on to uh, what I really want to speak about today, which is the environment. So, we've we've had the, the COP27. Now, what I've, I always think about these COP events, um, we've had 27 of them now. I mean, we lost a couple in COVID. Um, but they didn't achieve anything. So, all this talking, sitting around, so they must have done 26 or 27 years uh, of these events and what have they achieved you know they've agreed certain targets and things like that over the years but nothing actually happens um, and we're, we're in desperate need of direct action now when I talk about direct action I don't mean um, you know, going out and protesting and doing things actually I think we need to call people to do something in their life now if you just did one thing in your life during this time of advent um, we can we can make some changes now if everyone stopped I'm not saying that all plastic is bad some plastic is good but single-use plastic is a big problem um, and we need to have we need to understand the, what these effects have on our environment and, and how this how this impacts our environment um, you know in, in in a number of years times we may have to be dealing with people with cancer based on the fact that they've been ingesting plastic that's in our water system. So we need to look after our environment. We need to do simple things. These don't need to be technological events. We don't need to, to uh, be inventing new technologies to solve the problems that we have. We just need to alter our lives. And that's, I know it's a standard, a bit like a, a rant or a bit like a sermon, but actually just doing one thing in your life. If we can commit to doing one thing for the rest of our lives, we can have a big impact on on the world. So my my big impact is I'm not going to use single use plastic. Actually, that's not what I, I'm not going to use that anymore. I'm going to make sure that the plastic that I use is multi use or recyclable. Now that's going to have an impact on me as a family. That means that some of the things that we buy are going to be more costly. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But that's, that's a, a, a price I'm willing to pay. Now, I know some people are unable to do that. They're unable to increase the costs of their family. But we're in a position where we can do that. So do things that will, are within your means that you can do. Now, some of the things, so you might think, oh, I can't change my life. I can't do anything. I'm struggling financially. But there's nothing stopping you from going out once a week and picking up some litter, going to the river and just making sure that some of the, that litter is not going into the river. Pick, making sure that that, that single-use plastics are not appearing in your, you know, you, that you take a carrier bag with you. 
um, when you go shopping rather than picking up a new carry bag, even though they cost 5p. And that's a saving. I know it's only a 5p saving, um, but actually just taking that carry bag with you will make a big difference. So let's let's see if we can commit to making that change. Advent for, for us Christians is a time of waiting and watching. Now, this is not the sort of waiting and watching that you do in a bus station or a train station or when you're waiting for, 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 for the movie to start or something like that. Not that sort of watching, watching and waiting. It's that time for us to prepare, to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. Well, we, we believe as Christians, we believe that Christ is coming again. Now, Advent for us then becomes that annual reminder that we must prepare ourselves for Christ to come. Will we be, when Christ returns and, and judges us, will we be rushing to his side because we've prepared ourselves and we're ready? Or will we be rushing around trying to do that, that preparation? You now get that choice to, to, to choose. Will you prepare yourself? Or will you rush around in the last moments before? I hope that's been some help for you. I hope you enjoy this time of Advent. And if get some time to prepare yourself in this busy time. Not just to type, prepare yourself for Christmas. Prepare yourself for the coming Christ. Amen.